Hi, this is Jennifer from Read It Again. Please join me while I read part one of The Silver Bracelet from the Unicorn Secret series by Kathleen Dewey. Please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this book, hit the like button and share this video with all your friends. Hart stood behind the lightning split pine tree waiting. It was cold. She envied Moonsilver and Avamir still warm and asleep back in the cave. Kip would be curled up between them, warmest of all. Please be careful, Ruth, she whispered. Little clouds of her breath hung in the air. Hart rubbed her mittened hands together. Somewhere above her on the mountainside, she heard a quail waking piping sleepily. Hart was nervous even though they had been very careful. Sometimes Ruth came in the evening, sometimes in the morning. Sometimes the visits were ten days apart. Sometimes they were five or seven or twelve. They never met in the same place twice. Ruth always went to visit a patient first. She checked on a number of older people farther out on the Dairytown Road. She met with Hart on her way back to Ash Grove. So far, it had worked. Tin Blackaby's men were used to Ruth coming and going to tend to the sick. There had always been baskets of apples and bags of wheat in her wagon. Her patients paid her with whatever they had. Hart sighed and glanced out at the empty road. They had worked out a signal. If Ruth, Ruth wore her red hat, it meant she had seen someone on the road. Her blue hat meant everything was safe. The red hat warned Hart to stay hidden, that Ruth wouldn't slow or even glance at her as she passed. Ruth had worn her red hat only twice. The first time, Tin Blackaby's men had been following her. The second time, it had just been a farmer's wagon. Hart rubbed her hands together harder, trying to keep them warm. Finally, she heard a faint clopping sound and held her breath as it got louder. She peeked out from behind the tree and grinned. Ruth was wearing her blue hat, pulled low over her ears. As the wagon came closer, Hart stepped forward, just far enough for Ruth to spot her. Whoa, Banjo, Ruth called to her baby bay gelding. She pulled him to a stop, then sat, looking straight ahead. Hello, dear girl, she said without turning. Hello, Hart whispered back. Ruth got down from the wagon and walked around to lift the bay's rear hoof. She always did this when she, when she and Hart met. In case someone came up the road, it would look as if Ruth had stopped to see if her horse had picked up a stone. Are you well? Ruth asked, using a stick to clean Banjo's hoof. I am, Hart assured her. Kip is still catching rabbits almost every day. Avamir and Moonsilver are finding enough grass. Hart stepped forward. How are you? Ruth let go of the bay's hoof. She fiddled with the harness, her back to Hart. I can outwork any mule I've ever met. Hart smiled. Have the rumors died down? Ruth shrugged. The man who thought Moonsilver was a goat is still boasting about what fools the others are. Simon still claims you stole his horses. But have the unicorn rumors stopped? Hart asked. Ruth shrugged again. No, everyone loves the old stories too much. But people laugh. No one really believes there was a unicorn in Ash Grove. Hart sighed. It was the best she could hope for. Will you hide the wagon? And come up to the cave with me? Hart asked. She wanted Ruth to stay. Better not, Ruth said. I'm expected back to tend Tibbs Renner's twisted ankle. Hart frowned. Tibbs had always been mean to her, but she pitied him and understood him. The children of Ash Grove made fun of them both. He's being apprenticed in Dairytown, Ruth said. Wants to learn blacksmithing. His mother says... I suspect he just wants to get away from that cruel father of his. Ruth walked around her horse, her fingers going through the motions of harness checking. Simon has been ill. Hart gasped. He has? Oh, he will soon recover, Ruth told her. I made him pay me this time, though, 
Hurt covered her mouth with one hand. He paid you? Yes, Ruth said. She glanced up the road, then back toward Ash Grove. With these. She pulled a little woven bag out of her coat pocket. She tossed it to Hart, meeting her eyes for an instant. Simon said they're from the blanket you were wrapped in when he found you. They're silver threads like the one my grandmother gave me. You still have it? Hart nodded. Of course. It hurt Simon to give these up, Ruth said. Hart pressed her lips together. She slipped the little bag into her pocket. Poor Simon. Ruth nodded. Poor indeed. He does not have a single friend. Hart wiped her eyes. Don't pity him too much, Hart, Ruth said. If he had known for an instant that Moonsilver and Avermere were unicorns, he'd have sold them to Tin Blackaby or even Lord Dunraven, Hart finished for her. Ruth nodded, even knowing it would break your heart. She looked up the road again, then down it. Ruth shook her head. Then swiftly she pulled three cloth sacks out of the back of the wagon. She tossed them neatly into the trees. Hart saw a little tin of cheese roll out the top, cheese roll out the top of one of the sacks and her mouth watered. Thank you so much, Ruth, she said quietly. Ruth looked straight at her for just a moment. It worries me to death, you being out here alone. Hart blinked back tears. Ruth smiled at her and walked back around the wagon. She kicked at the narrow iron footrest to knock the snow and mud off her boots. Then she climbed up. I will repay you for all this, Hart said. Ruth made a quiet sound of dismissal. There is nothing to repay. I just wish I could make things right. That's all. Hart sighed. Be careful, please. Tin Blackaby might... No, he won't hurt me, Ruth interrupted her. I tend to him, same as everyone else. Hart nodded, knowing that Ruth couldn't see her. She was looking straight ahead again. Let's meet in five days, by the white boulder, on the straightaway before this one, Ruth said. Come at noon. Hart knew the flat-topped white rock that stood near the road. I will be waiting, she said. Thank you, Ruth. Ruth glanced at her. Hart felt the look like a warm touch. A single instant after that, Hart heard the thudding of hooves on the snow-packed road. Someone was coming fast and riding hard. Ruth, Hart whispered. The hoofbeats were getting louder. Take care, little one, Ruth answered quietly. She shook the reins hard. Banjo lurched into a gallop. Hart ducked back into the trees. Just then, Tin Blackaby's men burst around the bend, their horses galloping. They saw Ruth's wagon wagon and reined in, surrounding her. Hart watched through the tree branches, her breath uneven. She couldn't hear what they were saying. Suddenly, Ruth jumped down from the driver's bench. She came striding back, then faced the men, her hands on her hips. She looked furious. I dropped my coin purse when your horses startled mine, she accused. She walked toward Hart, staring down at the mud and ice in the road. Hart crouched, hiding. I meant to see my patient again in five days, Ruth shouted angrily at the men. Why do I have to wait two weeks? One of the men spurred his horse toward Ruth. It's Blackaby's decree, healer. Why is he closing the road? Ruth asked, pretending to grab something from the ground, then walking toward the rider. He hasn't told us anything, the man growled. Hart watched Ruth get into her wagon. The riders trotted alongside as Banjo started off. Hart stood still until they were out of sight. Ruth had found a way to make sure Hart understood what had happened. Hart was grateful, but she was still worried. She gathered the supplies Ruth had brought, then started uphill, tears in her eyes. As she walked into the cave, Kip opened his blue eye, then his brown one. He wriggled his way out from between the unicorns. Moonsilver lifted his head. Avamir scrambled upright, 
Something terrible happened, Hart said aloud, talking to the animals the way she always did. Tin Blackaby's men came. She set the food down, then reached into her pocket for the little woven bag Ruth had given her. She opened it carefully. There were two long silver threads inside. She passed them between her fingers. They were round and silken. Hart pulled the tiny pouch Ruth had given her months before from her carry sack. It held the single silver thread Ruth's grandmother had passed down to her. Hart placed it with the two new threads, then carefully closed the little woven bag. Hart smiled. Ruth's grandmother had given her the single silver thread as a luck charm. Ruth had told Hart it would protect her too. Hart sighed. It had. Until now. But how odd that her own mother, whoever she was, had owned a blanket embroidered with thread, just like the thread Ruth's grandmother had handed down. Hmm. And where was the shop that held such wondrous things? In Dairytown? In the village at the foot of Dunraven's castle? People said these places were full of wonders. Why not a shop that sold silver embroidery thread? Kip barked softly. Hart turned. You want your bone? He barked again. Hart began to go through the supplies. As always, Ruth had packed a few surprises. The tinned cheese was for her. She gave Kip his bone. There was corn and oats for the unicorns. Hart gave them a little of each, then tucked the rest away. Hart slept the night's swept the night's ashes aside, then laid kindling on the glowing coals. Within minutes, she had a cook fire to boil her barley. She ate half as much as she usually would. If Ruth couldn't come for two weeks or longer, she would need to stretch the food. Hart cleaned up, then walked outside. Kip followed, leaving his bone behind. The unicorns came out a moment later. Hart looked up at the sky. The worst of the winter storms were over. Kip leaped into his morning run. He had grown. His legs were getting long. He tore along, circling her. Moonsilver danced into a canter to play with Kip. Usually it made Hart smile to watch them. Today she just sighed and leaned against Avermeer. This is awful, she said. I don't want to cause trouble for Ruth. She knew she should leave. But where could she possibly go? The next morning, Hart heard voices. Picking her way downhill, staying hidden, she saw Tim Blackaby's men pass on the road. The following afternoon, they passed by again. Were they looking for her? Would they look this hard for two horses and a ragged girl? It seemed impossible, unless they suspected the truth about Moonsilver and Avamir. The idea they might know about the unicorns made Hart's throat ache. It doesn't matter, Hart told Kip the next day as they sat beside a snowy meadow. Moonsilver and Avamir were grazing above them, pawing at the snow to uncover the frozen grass. Kip tilted his head and stared at her. It doesn't matter why they're searching, Hart went on. If they keep at it, we'll have to leave. The next day, Hart watched the road. She saw no one at all. The morning after that, her spirits lifted a little. She found herself hoping. Maybe Ruth would come to the White Rock meeting place after all. Maybe she would explain that Tin Blackaby had been upset about something, that it had nothing to do with her or Hart or the unicorns. Hart started up to the meadow. As always, she led the unicorns and Kip across the rockiest ground she could find. They left no tracks among the rocks. It was safe. The unicorns never stumbled. Kip was as sure-footed as any dog. Hart was the one who had to be careful on the rough ground. The rising sun made the snow sparkle. Kip played with a stick for a while. Then Hart made snowballs, throwing them for him to chase. She watched Kip bounding through the snow. Each time she threw a snowball, he raced back to drop it near her feet. Kip, Hart said, 
He stopped looking up at her. He stopped looking up at her, his ears high. We have to leave here. Kip's ears went down. Hart knew he could hear the worry in her voice. Hart closed her eyes, scared even to think about it. They would have to travel on the road. The snow was too deep on the slopes. They could get lost too easily. But if they stayed in the cave and were found... By early evening, Hart was tired of worrying. Supper time, she said. Kip shook snow from his coat. Avamir, Hart called, Moonsilver. The unicorns stopped grazing to look at her. Let's go home, Hart called to them. They turned and began to pick their way through the deep snow toward the rocks. Once the fire had warmed the cave a little, Hart poured out a little barley to boil. You catch rabbits, Kip, she said. The unicorns graze. I'm the only one who needs Ruth's help all the time. Kip tilted his head, then his ears jerked upward. He faced the cave entrance. Hart scrambled to her feet. What? Kip whimpered. He lifted one forepaw, then he growled low in his throat. Hart heard something faint, far away. Voices? Join me next time for part two of the Silver Bracelet from the Unicorn Secret series by Kathleen Dewey.